Welcome to my video, how to create a realistic park enclosure and wildlife park. In this video, um, I, I want to show uh, how to create an enclosure not that is that you might see in a zoo instead of on a safari. Wildlife park is. Um, one of its strengths is you can build these wide expanses, um, you know, to create a park, you know, or a, uh, a safari experience for your guests. But I sort of like the municipal zoo type of feel, and in um, in, in this video, I'm going to show how to create a realistic-looking enclosure that might resemble one in a real-life zoo. Uh, as you can see, I created four sides. That's this is my canvas, um, and I'm going to build it within here. At the top of the screen, that's where the visitors will view it. So, what you're if you, imagine being a visitor up at the top, looking in, and what I want to create is what what could be like a diorama. It will have three sides. And it sort of, as you look at it, it sort of drags you in to that space as you view it. Um, when people are trying to create realistic looking enclosures, or just any enclosure in this game, I think a lot of people really don't know where to start. Because, you know, I used to be like that when I played Zoo Tycoon long ago. Um, and now that this is on Steam, I think a lot of people will have the same question. How do I make my enclosure look really good? How do I make it look decent? Um, and the trick really is into layering and using a variety of textures. So you can see right now I am uh, adding these hills uh, along the back and uh, sort of along the sides so that it creates the three sides of this so-called diorama. Um, I've also created a variety of ground cover and in, in this enclosure I'm going to place some blue wildebeest and it's important that the ground cover is between certain variables so when you start to plant or, or uh, paint your ground you want to make sure that the, it, the hardness is what the animal desires. Otherwise, he will not be happy in that enclosure. Uh, ground hardness in this game is really what environment is to Zoo Tycoon. So if you played Zoo Tycoon, you knew that your anim animal required a certain environment. In this game, ground hardness really means, um, really means environment. And as you know, when we actually zoom in to the ground, you will see the Serengeti grass uh, come alive, putting some uh, water here for the animals to drink. You can also put a water dish, but I want to make this realistic as possible for a zoo. That is, you know, I do want it to look like a zoo enclosure. So I do like the water pumps because. You know, that sort of reminds you, hey, you know, this isn't the wild. This is a manufactured uh, environment. Uh, and that, that sort of, uh, it, that sort of adds some, to me, some realism to the game. You know, to remind, to remind you that, you know, that this is a, a space that you're creating. Um, what I found with those water pumps is you cannot place them very deep. Uh, if, if you guys know how to make this work, let me know. But what I found is the tip of the water pump must be above water. And there are certain sizes of pumps. You've got the small, large, and then a very large pump. Now, I'm sure there are ways to make it deeper because, you know, the water does go downhill. Um, but I haven't experimented that far. I'm placing some reeds around this water 
because you know that it makes some realism those smiley faces aren't very real and I'll turn those off here in a minute In the Serengeti, you don't really, or uh, wherever wildebeest live, you don't really see oases all over the place. Um, so I'm adding some trees. And, you know, here I'm looking at the uh, hardness that the trees desire. In this game, you must take care of every plant in the game so that requires you know that you that the ground is suitable for the tree or the plant um, and that it has proper water so you know I believe that because this is next to um, you know this is almost touching the water I think these will be naturally watered but I will still build a gardener so that it can access these plants these trees uh, Particularly, I think the reeds you don't need to water, but the trees definitely need to get watered. Um, you'll notice a darker tone around the, um, the, the the water. What's interesting is if you place water, the ground turns to mud. So you can sort of see now that you're looking at it almost from a perspective, overhead perspective of a visitor, what this might look like, you know, when I'm talking about a diorama. You know, when I went to school, we never did dioramas, and it wasn't until a few years ago that I actually saw a real one. Uh, uh, well, not real, but it was from The Simpsons. Uh, I'm like, oh, so that's what a diorama is. Of course, I had seen them before, I just never knew it. I think I would have liked making dioramas in school had that been an assignment. Um, I'm adding some different texture to these hills. Uh, this uh, this gives dimension. You know, the, it's like basically this game. It's like you're painting. Um, you, you're you're painting a landscape. You've got your layers, um, distance which is your background, your middle layer, and then your foreground. Um, I just placed some um, sticks because that helps the wildebeest to scratch, and they like to scratch. And what I did underneath of the sticks is I added um, a darker patch of ground because it doesn't look realistic if they just sit there. And, you know, in, in nature, nothing really grows underneath a pile of r debris. Um, so I sort of wanted to show that shadow and the fact that it was empty. I just realized I don't need this because I've got a pond or an oasis for the water. All right, these wildebeests, one thing in this game you need to really pay attention is the size of the herd. You want 5 to 25 wildebeests for them to be happy. No, no less than 5. Otherwise... They will not breed or do anything that you want. I put in three females and one male, or sorry, two males. And um, this way, you know, they might start to breed. I, I looked at how often they breed and they don't, they only have one offspring. Um, so it would be manageable. Later on, if it's not manageable, I might sterilize or... Uh, separate the males from the females you know build a fence between the middle all right so here we are as a visitor looking in and this definitely looks far more realistic than just a patch of uh land um or a patch of just grass park grass let's do it from here inside the enclosure that's that serengeti grass that you're looking at the smiley faces, I forgot to turn those off. I will in a second. Um, you know, for for the uh, for the game, this looks pretty decent, I think. I did add a food bin because I wasn't sure 
um, if they would be able to forage enough food from that grass. And after all, this is an artificial enclosure. So, you know, when we talk about realism, you know, I, I, I don't mind it looking like a zoo. I also needed to make sure I added a gate so that the zookeeper can get into there to clean up animal poop and to feed them. And now I'm adding some of the rocks because I, I looked and the uh, these animals, they part of their behavior, they like to jump, which I'm not really sure that's real in nature, but um, it is in the game. And, you know, just place these by eye. In nature, of course, you rarely see a single rock all by itself. So I'm adding these in patches. I'm adding them in the water because the erosion exposes larger stones and things like that. There is not a lot of variety of rocks in this game, unlike in Zoo Tycoon. I remember there being many different types of rocks. Reeds don't look good over there. I want to put more reeds in the water where they grow well. Probably another tree to help balance and I'll show you something with this tree. I'm going to place it here on the mud. You can see that darker layer um, But the tree wants 25 to 60 hardness and mud I think is probably zero So it that tree will not do well after a while So I'm going to go into the ground find a cub um, some this has 50 hardness and I'll decrease the range so you barely see it, but it gives some nice texture uh, some good dimension, some, looks like shadow and things like that, and the tree will be very happy. So it has the ground hardness that it requires, and it helps to you know add dimension to the game. So you don't want everything to be the same color all the time. Painting outside and inside of the fence is very difficult. You know, in Zoo Tycoon, if you painted inside an enclosure, it would not paint outside of the enclosure. It knew where the fence was. In this game, it does not know where the fence is, and you've got this bleeding between the fence and uh, the outside of it. I don't think that looks very good, but there's not. I don't think there's anything you can do. If anyone find, knows a good solution, let me know. Because I know that the paths in this game are very basic. You know, there are some weaknesses to this game, but still, you know, compared to Zoo Tycoon, it's very fun to play. Uh, both games are very fun to play. Um, this seems to have a lot more variety. Now I have a thunderstorm, certainly does not look like the plains of Africa, but you can sort of imagine what it might look like to a visitor. And you sort of understand what I mean by a diorama. And if you go to a zoo today, that's, that's sort of what you see. Happy wildebeest. I like the animal behaviors in this game. It seems to have a lot more uh, behavior per animal than Zoo Tycoon did have. I'd be curious to see what would happen if I put a cheetah or a lion in here. I might do that in another video. I do know in Zoo Tycoon, um, the animals did kill them. And then you'd, there, there would be a carcass, surely, 
the same thing happened here. I, th I think Zoo Tycoon and Wildlife Park 2 were released around the same time. Um, they copied each other, or this one copied the other, I don't know. But they're very similar. I think we need more of these type of games. Last year, Wildlife Park 3 was released, and it is beautiful. Unfortunately, the game mechanics are really poor. It's not selling very well. I don't think they're going to continue expansions. And I know that when this game was released on Steam a week or two ago, people were very excited. Uh, when I say a week or two ago, that is uh, July 2014. They were very excited for it. Um, Wildlife Park 2. Wildlife Park 3 has already been released for quite a while with zero excitement. I noticed one wildebeest was very thirsty, so I was concerned maybe that water was not water, you know, giving them any water to drink. But then I confirmed, I checked, she did walk into the water, and she did satisfy her thirst. So that's good. Because I think it would be, you know, even though this is a zoo, and you can have these food bins and things out. See, this, uh, this path does not look realistic to me. So I'm going to end this here. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any advice how to create a realistic enclosure for, uh, for me or for anybody, post it below. And uh, if you like this video, I might make some more. So please subscribe. Thanks for watching.